royal priesthood. Let's look at Moses' priesthood to understand what the Lord initiated in order to have relationship with man who had fallen in sin and broken fellowship with God in the Garden of Eden. Exodus 33.7 And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, first of all, there was a place called the tabernacle, and you had to go out to seek the Lord at the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass, when Moses went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. So this was a big event. Everybody came to their tent and watched him go in. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he turned again to the tent, into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Here we have established a, a set of um, a form, a pattern that is being established regarding speaking to God, speaking to man, one man that he chose Moses face to sp- face as you're speaking to your friend. But all the rest of the people were in their tents. They stayed there. They watched this happen. They watched the pillar, uh, cloudy pillar come sort of guard the tabernacle door that no one else had access to this privileged position. Verse 12, And Moses said to the Lord, See you say to me, Bring up this people, and you have let me not know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray you, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way, that I may know you that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to them, If your presence does not go with me, carry us not up hence, for wherein shall it be known here that I and your people have found grace in your sight? Is it not that you go with us? So... Shall we be separated, I and your people, from all people that are on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Now here Moses was establishing, Look, Lord, if I found grace, show that we are separated and different from all the nations in the earth, that you have chosen us, that we are a separated people. And the Lord said to Moses, he said, I will. I'll do what you ask me. And he said, also the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing that you have spoken for you have found grace in my sight and I know you by name. And he said, that is Moses said, I beseech you, show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, You cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. 
Oh, this is an interesting place. Here Moses is speaking with God, and none of the he's gone up to seek God. No one else can come and seek him with him. This is a, a position only afforded to him. And this Moses asked that he would make it known that the people were separate and different from all the nations of the earth. And the Lord granted him his position, petition. And, and then Moses said, okay, I, I would like to see your glory, which is described here in this translation, your, his goodness, the goodness of God. And God will also say his name. And he declares that he will be gracious and show mercy to whom he will. And then he says to Moses, you cannot see my face because no man will see God's face and live. And this speaks of in the glory of God, his uh, place of tremendous judgment. And not only that, when God's glory goes by, he's going to hide Moses in the cleft of the rock which speaks of Jesus, the rock, and God's going to cover him with his hand. And he will remove his hand and he can see his back parts, but the face shall not be seen. Because although Moses had relationship with God, the sin of Adam was still in his DNA, his seed. He still contained that as Jesus, the second Adam, had not come yet and covered the sin with the blood of God himself in order to make access with God and fellowship with him to speak with the Lord face to face as the Lord calls. It's only to those whom the Lord calls and brings into his presence. And this is the pattern of heaven we might understand the ways of God. What does it say here? He said, Lord, he wanted to know God's ways and how God will perform. He was a humble man. He did not presume. He understood order and governmental protocol. So at Exodus 34, 1, in this passage, God establishes his covenant. And God is establishing a relationship according to the fact that he is a great king of kings, the ruler of all the universe, and must be, um, must instruct men on how to come into his presence because they are rebellious and their sin has broken fellowship and relationship. And the Lord said to Moses, Hew two tables of stone like the first ones, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which you broke. Now, this is the second tables of stone. The first two were broken because as Moses came down from the mountain with the two, first two tables, the camp of the Hebrews in idolatry, worshiping a golden calf. And Moses was angry and broke the tables of stone. Verse 2. And be ready in the morning and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present yourself to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come with you, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. Why? Because they would die. You cannot come to God and presume and on your terms because that makes you God. You come to him on his terms. And he was so, his glory and his power were so tremendous that unless you were invited and covered by the Lord's hand, you die. And he who two tables of stone like to the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning, went to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stones. The Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, 
keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray you, go among us. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. This is Moses' intercession, his petition to God. Verse 10, and he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all your people I will do marvels, such as not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which you are shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with you. Observe you that which I have commanded you this day. Behold, I drive out before you the Amorite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of a land where you go, lest it be for a snare in the midst of you. But you shall destroy their altars, break their images, cut down their groves. For you shall worship no other God. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And they go a-whoring after their gods. And do sacrifice to their gods. And won't call you. And you eat of his sacrifice. And you take of their daughters unto your sons. And their daughters go a whoring after their gods. And make your sons go a whoring after your gods. They shall make you no molten gods. Here the Lord lays out his hand of power on their behalf. If they continue to worship him. And not get into idolatry to keep covenant that the Lord God is establishing with them. In these passages, we see that Moses is the established priest, the mediator between God and men. Men cannot just come and have access to a holy God because they would be destroyed by his glory. And we also see, as he ministers to God, that God is establishing his requirements for the meeting with him.